Hello, uh, this is Richard Collins. Um, I thought about this some more after showing you the magnitude of the signal at the station. Uh, I thought that it, uh, I could show you a way to use the horizon system to get the uh, vector components of the signal. And uh, there's still some steps not completed yet but uh, it will give you a, a starting point if you want to do this for any location, uh, any time frame. <clears throat> now, uh, this is identically where we left off before, except that I've changed the ephemeris type from observer table, where I was just getting a distance to a vector table, which uh, generates a, a state vector. Now, the, the coordinate origin here is your location. So it's actually the, the origin is at the station. And I'm looking at the moon in this case. And I'm going to uh, 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 list out or save the, the vectors of the time series of the position, x, y, and z position of the, of the moon. Uh, with respect to the station. Okay, uh, I'll just not change that. I, I've already done this uh, for basically I used your, your location, the time period I wanted, the units that I had, set it for comma separated value format, and said that I want to download or save, and I've just simply set this for vectors. I'm set on the moon, and then to change this to the sun, you just say, uh, as you would guess, uh, sun. And then it, it'll switch there. So that's all I did. I had all these set. It, uh, I, then I just did uh, sun, generate ephemeris, moon, generate ephemeris, earth. You, you also need the earth center um, because you need to, uh, I'll show you in a minute. But basically, those are the three vectors that you need uh, to do this calculation. Uh, so, when we and when you generate the ephemeris, it'll come out with a generic name here. And what I did was fairly carefully, since the, it was set on the sun here. Uh, the sun. You see how I named it before the sun from the station. Nano G experiment. So, uh, you know, if you want to be more explicit, you would say sun uh, vector, uh, vector uh, from station uh, 10th October 2016 uh, to, uh, oh, not 10th, I'm sorry, 1 October to uh, uh, 9 October 2016. That's something like that. I'm going to just cancel this. I don't need to save that. Let me go and show you what they look like when they come out. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the raw output from the vector. It includes, I included the body, or what they call the object information in this case the earth. This was the one from the earth. And when you get down here, you see this thing and it looks, it looks pretty intimidating, but it's not too bad. At the bottom, the very bottom, these are the, these are the column descriptions. Why they don't put them up at the top, I don't know. So it's the X, Y, and Z components in kilometers, the X, Y, and Z components of the velocity. So the, the, uh, uh, you, there, uh, it gives you the range, which is the simple, you know, the radial distance from the sun to the moon or the earth or the sun, uh, the one-way light time, which might be useful later on, and then the range rate, which is the uh, rate of change of the range. And actually, that I'm, I won't go ahead and jump ahead here. Okay, so those are the components. And what I did was I created a, a summary spreadsheet. Uh, rather than working with this, I took an empty sheet and I took simply, well, first I copied all of these 
and let me show you that. So this one, I, I'm not going to refer to it again, so I'm going to close it. Uh, I'm not going to save it. Okay, this this now is the full record. This is where I copied that. So I took the sun and station coordinates, just the results from those those vector extractions from a horizon system, and then the moon here, uh, those components, and all. Uh, the colors mean nothing. I just I just wanted to make it easier to visualize that these are three separate sections of the raw data. Then, uh, since I'm not doing anything at the moment with the velocities um, and, and all, uh, what I did was I, I moved over, I used the, uh, the distance, I could recompute it, but I used the distance and uh, the positions uh, there, and I put it into this table. Now, I didn't high, uh, color these yet, so let's see, what, did, what color did I use here? Yeah, okay, so that's, this is the sun parts, just from that other, from the full table. And then the moon, let's see, what did I color? Moon. I think it colored it red and blue again. Yeah. So just to keep these corresponding. Uh, oh. All right. So this is the raw data again. It's just the portion I need. I need the X, Y, and Z for the sun uh, and its distance from the station to the distance. I is the indicator for the station. I, I, that's what I use. I, uh, I changed from the last video because I, I used X for the station, but in fact I, the ith station is the way I normally do this when I'm working with a lot of stations. So that's there. And then, uh, okay, then here uh, the first thing I did was I calculated the, uh, I simply I took the vector, the vector distance. Uh, uh, let's see, this is the sun. Okay, I wanted to know where the sun was relative to the center of the Earth. Uh, how far the sun was from the center of the Earth, and so it's the it's the vector. Uh, if you look at the calculation here, it's C. So it's this. X, Y, and Z minus uh, the corresponding, uh, did I get these right? Oops. Pause here a minute. Uh, excuse me. I had to check. I, I, my eyes shifted off a bit. Okay, so that's just, uh, for, so the sun minus the earth in station coordinates, and then that's just the square root of the sum of squares of those. So these are the distance. This is the distance from uh, from the sun to the center of the earth. The distance from the moon to the center of the earth. Now that, uh, if you remember, that's basically what we did. the 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 sun component of the station thing is the uh, gm of the sun times 1 over r squared for uh, from the sun to the station minus 1 over r squared from the sun to the center of the earth. So it, the way I always repeat to myself, it's the sun at the station minus the sun at the, the, earth, the center of the earth. And then uh, there's more to it. Well, there, anyway. And that, that will give you the... So this, these two components here are the sun vector uh, 
the sun's acceleration of the station minus the sun's acceleration at the center of the earth. And so this, this magnitude points along the direction between the station and the sun. Okay, that's, uh, or does it exactly? I hope I haven't made a mistake here. It points in the direction of the sun from the station. I may have to double check. I'm a little tired here. Okay, uh, I think I'm getting close here. Let's do this. This this uh, is the uh, component of of the sun uh, of the moon from the station. Okay, so there's two pieces to it. Now you can take those and and project and put them in the correct direction. Now, sorry. So I know where the sun is. Uh, from the station I have its X, Y, and Z the, if I take the X portion of the sun and divide by the distance to the sun that gives me the unit vector in the sun's direct you know, of the unit vector the X unit vector of the sun's position uh, if I multiply that by the magnitude that gives me the uh, and in this case, maybe an estimate of the um, of the component, the x component of of the signal. So okay, so I do that for the x, y, and z for the sun, and then again for the x, y, and z for the moon. Uh, tedious, isn't it? Uh, but I'm trying to do this in a fairly straightforward way, so you got you can you can uh, do this yourself. Uh, I'll send you this spreadsheet. I'll post this spreadsheet on the uh, Google Drive uh, folder, and I'll, anything I drop in that folder will be available to you. So I gave you access to the folder. Uh, I think it's just called Wuhan as the name of the folder. Uh, anyway, so now this is the total, the sum of these two, uh, these two pieces just the magnitudes, let's see, uh, so it's just there, and then the, uh, uh, these are the components, oh, I'm doing all these right, uh, these are, these are the X, Y, and Z of, of that signal, and I, I, double checked it and it, it should be correct. Let me see if I'm going through my geometry to make sure <laughs> I did this right. Uh, let's see. Uh, if you see I'm making a mistake, please please correct me. Um, all the pieces are here. It's just a matter of whether I remember my basic geometry at this point. Um, so, let's see. Uh, anyway, then I computed the sum of squares, uh, the sum of the squares of uh, the magnitude of this vector here, and then compared it. So uh, the um, Excel uses 64-bit calculations, and I think it's effectively more than 16-digit accuracy. Uh, these are a lot of calculations. The data from uh, uh, the Horizon system, the Jet Propulsion Lab's Horizon system, is also carried in 16-bit. I think it's a Fortran program. And so that is uh, a double precision Fortran calculation. And so what we're seeing is, is you know, of a fra still a, a significant uh, error just in rounding and calculation here. Now, uh, before I'm going to stop for a moment, I want to think about this a bit. Uh, pardon the interruption. I'm just uh, going through this geometry a little bit. If you look at the sun here, this this kind of makes sense here. This the the component in the direction of the sun has a small z component because the sun is on the on the equator and so almost all of its 
effect is in the X and Y plane uh, for, uh, let's see, is that correct? Yeah, uh, the coordinates are uh, equatorial coordinates. The uh, so this there won't be at the station. There won't be much z component for the for the sun. The moon can be above the equator, and that that should be there. And then there's a significant portion of the uh, station uh, is from the moon and so yes it's actually the moon is about twice the uh, sun's contribution and uh, that gives it a, a portion above uh, in, the, in the z direction so the North, I'll have to go through this, but basically uh, from the Z you can get the northward uh, component and from the X and Y uh, accounting for rotation you can get the east and west. But let me just do a real quick thing here. I just wanted to show you uh, what, let's see, let's see what this looks like. Uh, I, which is my the point of doing this here actually let's I just wanted to show you the um, okay uh, th this is what the components look like okay they're uh, the X and Y uh, are actually for there's not much Z component here uh, Z being uh, to the north in the in the Earth's polar direction, so uh, it it varies a little bit. So there's not much north and south signal, uh, but there is a significant east and west. If I re if I'm reading this correct, uh, I must tell you it's it's difficult, um, even having spent a couple of years on this, for me to keep the uh, coordinates in mind. <laughs> so, uh, but it's a nice complex signal. The timing is precise and exquisite. It's, uh, you cannot be off by more than a second in your times and it shows up in the residuals. So, uh, I actually was playing some, uh, doing some experiments uh, to see you know what's the effect of changing by you know fra uh, portions of a second uh, uh, in in this when you run uh, a day's worth of second data 86,400 data points and the date and your signal is that precise it's so close to the actual uh, in shape uh, that uh, you can tell if your if uh, if your orientation is wrong or not, uh, including uh, you know the orientation relative to rotation of the Earth. Uh, how far you can push this, I don't know. I, I think that with an array of these things, uh, you can go about as far as you want. So. Uh, you know, uh, now I, I, I'm kind of indicating here with this rough error calculation that rounding is an issue and you need, since you're working with, you know, uh, solar system barycentric, uh, solar barycentric coordinates at the beginning converting to earth uh, centered or station centered coordinates, there's places for error and rounding and so forth. So, uh, you know, if you if we could run this entire thing in a 128-bit uh, floating point, uh, then it would be easy. I, I haven't looked lately, but I mean, 
uh, when I need a machine, I just buy a new one. Uh, for the calculation, it's easier than trying to trying to do the mathematics. For the time I would spend uh, playing around trying to trying to deal with algorithms to uh, you know rearrange the equations and all to make them nice and easy, or you know so that they don't do rounding, uh, you can just as well find uh, a computer that will do it or emulate you know a 256 bit uh, uh, calculation in in um, you know in software and get the same thing done. The whole point of doing these calculations, carrying all the precision, is something I learned. I, I worked at the at NASA's uh, uh, gravity gravity models, the spherical harmonic expression for this uh, for the Earth's potential uh, back in the 70s and uh, the lesson I learned there was that you keep all of your numbers all of your calculations everything so that you can actually reverse it uh, completely so that you can calculate backwards if you have to and reproduce your original starting point uh, with rounding, uh, that's a that's a dicey game, but with um, uh, computers and precision today, you can do that. So anyway, uh, this is just an indication of how you know w what kind of a signal we're looking at there. I'm going to have to do some more thinking. I'll do another one of these and show you uh, how to get this into northeast and in uh, vertical components. Um, you can imagine uh, sitting at the center of the earth looking out at the station and then uh, in station coordinates uh, these the X and Y are uh, along the equator and the Z is the uh, is toward the North Pole direction. So uh, you should be able to just uh, flip this with a little bit of thinking. I don't trying to do this on the fly as I'm making the video is a little hard. Uh, so I'll I'll uh, send this and and uh, and then work on that piece of it.